Good evening. I wrap sing with your ETF Spider stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Monday, the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, 2024. I'm be glad to be back. I hope you are. Happy Easter to one and all. I did what I said. I didn't even look at the market Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I started last night looking at charts again. Didn't do much with it, just looked. And today was the first day that I came back to the marketplace and actually in the morning putting out trade recommendations and a number of them on weekly basis, not a daily basis today, on pullbacks in some of the stocks. You know, we still haven't had a lasting intraday, you know, a sh even a short-term correction that's carried much over 2% let alone what you normally get. Now, April's normally an ugly month in the stock market. And when you come off such a stellar first quarter, the question is, do we get a normal correction? Now, normal con corrections, normal, can run 10 to 13%, 13%. If you go back enough history, you'll find that that is very typical in a correction. Not necessarily the month of April's correction, but a correction time. Um, you can't forget that you're gonna get people talking about sell May and go away. Well, will that work this year? Because nothing has worked with the idea of a sell in it. You know that? I know that. So my attitude on the market is pretty simple and I think I can sum up what the market's looking at. The market is saying very simply, that as you're seeing a number of other countries have to rush with their central banks to cut rates to spur on the economy, Include in that not necessarily rate cuts by China, but certainly fiscal stimulus to get their economy going. What happens then is other countries can come in, their economies get stronger, they're buying goods, trade picks up. That is the idea of that, right? Well, it's a race because the U.S. economy is so strong, while we keep hearing the what I call them the pundits, the naysayers say, no, you just wait, you're going to get your three cuts this year. I keep asking why, that's all. And I thought about this on Sunday. I said, has anything really changed? To my point of view, it hasn't. You have to see weak labor, and this is a labor week. What happens? On Tuesday, we start getting the JOLTS report. On Wednesday, you get, if I'm correct, the, uh, let's see, the ADP's coming out this week, Challenger Gray. You get the unemployment claims coming out on Thursday, and then the U.S. jobs report. They're looking for the jobs report to be around 205,000 new jobs created. Will unemployment move towards 4%? That would get people very excited that the Fed will then look at the numbers and say, ah, look at that. We're getting to the point where do we have to start getting ahead of the curve by considering rate cuts and other actions by the Fed. But what if it stays in the 3.9 to 3.7 range, slips a little bit back there? Then the opposite story comes true. So you got to be open-minded to both sides of it. When's the last time we saw a good correction in the stock market? You haven't. It's really simple. October. Yeah, October. After that October 27th, 28th period, if you take a look, it's been a runaway train to the upside. Every time we think we're going to get a break, the bulls come in that have missed coming in and new money gets deployed supporting the market. Will this be any different? I don't know. Tomorrow, the economic data starts at 7.55, and these are central uh, times, by the way, central daylight, uh, 7.55, then we get factory orders for February. They're a little bit old, but they're February. They come out at nine o'clock. But what the market's gonna focus on is gonna be the jolts report at nine in the morning, and I will cover that in my morning subscriber videos for everybody. I won't put them out till I see that report. And then we're gonna get the API at 3.30 in the afternoon. So as I'm looking at the market, you know, there's a couple of standouts that I looked at as I was looking at things. First one's AMC. Whenever you see that you have a big opening for a movie, give you an example. Dune came in, Dune 2, at 81.5 million for the opening weekend. Godzilla was supposed to come in at 50, it comes in at 80 million. I mean, that's big numbers. That's a huge difference. And you're down 58 cents. 
There's more going on here that meets the eye. This, this is a company that's in financial trouble. The question is, how do they survive? What do they do? You can't make it just once a year having a Beyonce and a Taylor Swift concert and think that's going to, to redo the company. So problems there. Automakers, uh, interesting what Tesla's going through right now. Tesla was down today 50 cents. They started off on a stronger note as they raised some of their model car, one of their main ones in China by $1,000. Well, their competition, BYD and the other companies came out and they said, well, thank you. We're gonna lower or give coupons or discounts in some manner on either services, some of the add-ons that you can get in some manner to find the way to take clientele as Tesla goes up and they, in essence, make their cars in some manner less expensive. That's what they did. Stock indices, I don't understand what people saw out of the Friday PCE. Now I say Friday, while the stock markets were closed in the futures markets, you were definitely open for government reports and economic data reports and they came out. And as you saw that, I didn't think there was enough in the PCE and I'm trying to read over the weekend and people are going, it's a friendly report. And I didn't see what was friendly about it. Um, you came in as expected, you were down a fraction, but if you look at some of the other numbers within it, it, it and I covered that today in my full research, so I'm not gonna go through it again here for you, but that, that's why you get my full research. And I covered all that and I just didn't see it. And I, I was a standout and I was right at the end of the day. Amazon's still looking good to me. Obviously Netflix is looking good. Schwab, well, you know, it's come back very nicely. Schwab is no longer in the doldrums the way that it was as I look at it. Now, I'm gonna continue with Freeport because I only covered it for you for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I'll finish up through Thursday of this week and then we'll get off of that and onto another stock. I can't yet do, and I know you all want me to do some, and the word is some, of the different ETFs out there, the newer ones that got released in the past two months. I can't do it, I need more data. And once we get it, then I can cover those, and I will. If you look at Freeport, up today, why? Over yesterday, Sunday, you had a series of reports on Chinese manufacturing and both the private sector and the official government, and they showed growth in both. Now, yes, China's got a nightmare in its property market, and that's a, a big drag on the market. China has a problem, as you know, they, they put all these restrictions on stocks when they don't like them going a certain way, where you can't go short, you can't sell on an open or a close, or a certain order size is restricted. When those come off, or did they come off, doesn't matter to me. It, what matters is they'll come in and change the game on you to make it work. Their international form, I started laughing as they, they've got the form and what a time to pick and say certain companies, you can't sell Microsoft in the government computer, certain chips can't be in them. The timing of that was insanity. Why not do it when everybody goes home? You don't do it at that moment when you're courting U.S. business. It was a little crazy. And they could have explained it before they did it then to the corporate leaders that attended from America. Um, but in FCX, you can see how the market's been moving higher. And if China does succeed in some manner in getting its economy back on its feet, that's a good thing. Factory gate prices did not go up even though manufacturing did. Is it a bleep or is it a turn? I prefer to think it's a turn in some manners. When we look at FCX, you have a lower and low, higher high pattern. You're certainly, you can see you're in an uptrend. You certainly can see these are the highest highs that the market has made. You're over all the key moving averages, the 18, right here in gray is the 200 and the 100 day average in the green. The Bollinger Band still at 49.09. So I think on pullbacks, you will find buying support coming into the market. My guess is it'll be at the 18 day average, which I think will get over this 44.54 very shortly. If you take a look at the number, the day before today, it was 43.12 and the day before that 42.64. So 50, 60 cents is what it's moving a day. And if that's the case, you're gonna be around 44.19 or so, just shy of that 44.54 level, the last break low very quickly. 
Momentum-wise, you're embedded. So I think the pros are looking to possibly see if they can find support at 5391, which is the 200-day moving average of closes. And that's what I think they're going to use as their pivot. I think you lose that upside momentum if the red line of the slow stochastics, which is at 88.48, closes back under 79. Barring that, I think the pros are going to look to buy the brakes in that market. I feel very good that I said, you know, I think you've seen the best part of the gambling for the final four. That doesn't mean more money won't come in. But when you got up to the Bollinger Band here and made one final shot and you barely hung on, that was last week. This was Friday's action. This is today. So I was still here on Wednesday and I thought the market and I set it up here. I said, I think that the pros are coming out and I think the game is over on that. Now, what they do with it, I don't know. I know Illinois is trying to increase its tax on different gaming revenues like this from 15% to 35%. Whoa, that'll drive everybody out of the state. UGA. As you can see, the market did slip back here in the gasoline fund. Now it's trying to pick up. This is a normal correction. I was too soon in the futures markets. And now the timing will be here right around the corner. Sometimes you get because of the whole market moving up. And you do realize, remember, we were looking at everything just on a tear to the upside. You get up and then you get another correction in the market. But if you're watching what's going on in crude oil, other markets, and if you buy into the idea that central banks are going to spur on economies, then oil usage is going to go on with that normal spurring of that. In XLF, so we come up here to the financial services, and you got to ask yourself, if, if the jobs reports this week were to come out and they show that the market is actually weakening substantially in jobs, what do you think happens to banks if interest rates start falling, not going up? I would think that they earn less at that point. So how they have to make it up is IPOs, MAs, merger acquisitions, things like that. I'd be a bit cautious is what I'm saying. Market is in overbought territory, certainly in a bull trend, but I would never tell you to buy against the Bollinger Band. You can generally come in at a better price than that. In the industrial sector, you have a market that has now got both numbers today over the 80 level. But if you go back to Friday, but over I'm sorry, Thursday over the 80 level and the day before not. Tomorrow's the key day in this market. On a correction, does it manage to find its support, keep both numbers over 80, and then give you a bounce off that support into Wednesday action? Going to be very important. We'll probably get a good idea first thing at 8.30 in the morning what it wants to do, but it can yin-yang on you because of the jolts report that's a half hour after the opening. CME stock looks terrible to me. Uh, the market failed at the 18-day average again. The only thing it has going for it, and it's important, is it's got the Bollinger Band and the 100-day average down here, and it's oversold. But as for a buy, now you'd have to get this market back over $215.97, $3 higher. It won't be easy in this market. It thinks nothing of giving up the gains. It's not acting good. RSPD, the consumer discretionary. Well, the jobs numbers are going to be a lot of this right now. You have an overbought market that's in an uptrend, keeps hitting the upper band, giving corrections off of it, and it's not embedded. So that's a, not an easy trade. When we look at the home builders, obviously what's going to happen with interest rates on the next move is important. Now, we've just taken the market from 4.2 to 4.3.1 in the 10-year note. So you're not getting that move to the upside, and that's being reflected today down 1.3%, as you can see, in the market. But as long as you keep both numbers, the red and blue, over 80, then the momentum build is there, and the pros will buy this break, evacuating the position if it gets the red line to close under 79, and then you look for the 107 area. Am I bearish at this time of the year? Absolutely not. Do I think there's still, for the home builders, ways for them to be very creative? Absolutely. They've done it over and over. The guys that survive it know how to do this. They bring out an old playbook and they dust it off and it's the same thing, it's just a new twist. 
In the energy sector, still very bullish in my opinion. Breaks are still being bought by the pros. You could see it last week coming up. Resistance, 95.75. In GLD, a breakout to the upside. Now, let's talk about that. Interest rates going up, the dollar back over and approaching the 105 level. We haven't been this high in months. It's not the high that we were at when you had interest rates, what, at 502 in the uh, 10 year? And you were sitting then, you got up to like 107 to 109 range in the dollar index. But gold normally doesn't rally when the dollar is strong and when interest rates are going up. It, that competes with it. Yet it's up. Why? China. Other central bank action. People counting that other central banks are going to drop their interest rates. The world is not America. The world's the world. And as those banks might make moves to drop interest rates, people are saying that's going to be inflationary. And it will be. I mean, the whole idea is to spur on the economies if they start cutting rates. And that's probably what's behind it. But I would say China's number, the fact that uh, they, they had a good num set of numbers on Sunday was important. In the silver market, you're up at the Bollinger Band resistance. The market had its correction into the 18-day average. It found its support here. The overall trend is sideways to bullish. That's the way I would look at it. Copper market, well, if FCX is good, this is good. And you can see how you're now at new highs in the uh, COPX. So that's very important. I mean, this is definitely bullish action. Now today, TLT, why did this suddenly fall out of bed? Well, if I was so wrong in my PCE thinking, then this should be going the other way. And I think the smart money, quote unquote, whatever that means, said to themselves, you know something? I'm not seeing out of that set of numbers anything. Let's see what the jobs numbers look like. And all of a sudden, what happened is the challenge of the 200-day average and the 18. Remember we talked about that on Wednesday. I wasn't here on Thursday. I said, you're now in a resistance area. Can you follow through? You couldn't. You got thrown back. Are we trending? We aren't. You have a higher high and lower and low. Got to be careful with this type of trade. Here's the dollar. Does it look anything but bullish? I don't think so. Um, it gets to the Bollinger Band. It backs off. Now, it's the first move over the 100-day average, and we're now at the third session over it. So I think that's going to prove to be your support in the near term. If the market keeps rallying, what number do I think can stop it? Well, it keeps hitting the Bollinger Band clearly, but here's your 200-day average. That is the number that you got to look at real hard because that's probably what the pro money is going to look at and say, okay, I'm going to come out against that number short term. In the euro, look at how you're slipping back down here, coming in uh, under the lower Bollinger Band, getting a bit oversold. So be a bit cautious with all that. You put it together. That's the game plan. The first day that you come back after an extended week, which is today, extended weekend is what I meant to say, because Friday was no trade. And when you get economic data on a Friday, it inevitably creates wishy-washy action. You opened stronger as the bulls were taking control this morning. And then as the reality set in and you were looking at some of the data coming through and you're going, what is so bullish about that? And the market reversed course. Are we trending down? We are not. You haven't had a 2% correction yet in the stock indices. Remember that. I mean, it's very hard to get one. I'll be talking this and in the morning, I'll be reviewing the ETF in the ETFs, what? The jolts report, what we're looking for, how to trade is looking at this and where to come with the market. So if you look for trade ideas, that's where I put them out for you. You come into the markets, you see the charts that I'm giving, you might have a question or two and you're going, I see what he's talking about because I explain it all. We look at daily and weekly charts. We're looking at futures videos. We're looking at spider ETF videos. And the idea there is I start with the futures because the ETFs, many of them, as you know, are based on the futures markets. So you take a look at DIA, IWM, uh, SPY. That's what they're going to be based on. We get an idea there what we're looking at and then the, all the reports. In the futures, 
I cover 40 charts on this. The spiders, I cover all this over 40 charts. So you have a morning full of fun action. And at the bottom of these charts, you can easily get to them because I put a slide on them on the website and you can just move your cursor and slide to the section you want. Make it so simple for people. You go to irapstein.com. Under the word research, everything is explained there, or just move your cursor to the top up here and give it a click. You will see the icon. It'll take you right there. I'm Ira. I'll catch up with you all in the morning. You have a great day.